Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm so excited because we have our special guest. He has a podcast on our show. He is part of our podcast community. It's Christopher Stelson, and he is a psychic medium, and today he's going to talk about earth luck. I'm so excited because, you know, the topics he's been going over is earth luck. He's been talking about many different topics on related to earth and related to heaven, and you have to check out his podcast because they're amazing and they're so inspirational and motivational and positive so check out his podcast on his show and Christopher it's amazing to have you today I'm so excited like always and you know tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do and and tell everybody about earth luck because I really am really interested to learn more about it so I'm Christopher Stilson. I'm a renowned psychic medium I am a transformational leader international best-selling author diamond feng shui consultant and an energy therapist. So I do many things. I tell people this all the time. I never stop learning. I love to learn. I love to do. And I love to make it so I can do anything to help other people. So whatever involves with helping someone, I will study and get into. And I've always found it fascinating, kind of just learn about, you know, the spiritual, uh, emotional, physical, and everything else around me. Um, I was born psychic. By, but by the age of four is when I can when, when I actually started remembering and communicating with spirit, which I love. And that's when I first met my spirit guide, Anna. And she has always been with me my whole entire life and always has been trying to guide me and connect me in the right direction. But there was a piece, a piece of my life where I didn't want to listen to her. I was stubborn. And um, that caused me from, ha it's caused me to have anxiety and depression. And then when I started actually tapping further into it and she explained a lot of details about me, I jumped into connecting more with spirit. And here I am now doing readings full time. I've been doing readings probably for the past almost eight years, at least eight or nine years. And I have been doing so much other things on top of it, especially with obviously podcasts. And I made a web series with my um, hometown news station of WTM. I loved doing it. COVID got in the way of that, sadly, um, which I wouldn't mind starting something up again like that. But my life has been absolutely wonderful ever since connecting with spirit. And I love how as time went on, I learned more about the three lux. And there are three lux in life. There are the heaven luck, which is 33.3% of your manifesting. There is the human luck, which is 33.3% of your manifesting. And then there is the earth luck, which is 33.3% of your manifesting. And if you guys want to check out any other videos of past podcasts that I did here with Stacy, you can definitely go check them out where we talked about the human and the heaven luck. Um, and uh, now we're on to obviously the earth luck. And earth luck, like I said, is 33.3%. When you work with all three of these lucks, you are actually tapping into 99.9% .9 of your manifesting and creating everything in your life, which I absolutely, I, I fall in love with just the fact of thinking about creating your own life and your own happiness. And it makes me feel more fulfilled that I can actually help people create that as well. So um, with earth luck, earth luck is your environment and whatever you have around you affects you and it affects you subconsciously. And it also affects you, um, in a, any spiritual way, emotionally, uh, and so on and so forth. So, um, whatever you have around you at all times, pictures, um, artifacts or colors and things like that can actually send you subconscious messages. And when these subconscious messages go in, obviously through your subconscious, it affects you in whatever emotional state you feel the need to be in. So if you have darker colors around you, you may feel more depressed or sad. If you have pictures around you that are of people that have passed, and when you look at these pictures, it creates more depression, sadness, instead of joy and happiness, you're asking more for that subconsciously. And whatever else you have around you as well, it sends a message out to the universe and the universe is saying, okay, well, this is what they're asking for. Let's give them more of it. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have any clutter around you, you are asking the universe, I don't want any new opportunities. I don't want any, you know, anything else coming into my life, or I want more clutter. I want more stress. I want more anxiety. Right. And when you start cleaning out your home and you clear it, it sends the message out to the universe saying, 
I want more opportunities. There's now space for opportunities. I want happiness. I want a clear path. And the universe goes, okay, here it is. So in, with earth luck, it is literally how your environment affects you. And uh, the first step to getting involved with it, um, well, first of all, it's all based on feng shui. If you guys ever heard of feng shui, feng shui literally um, means wind and water. And what happens is it's a study, it's been studied through 4,000 or so years, and it connects with where the placements are of things to help things, um, to help you grow for helping success. And the list continuously goes on. The first step in feng shui is literally to analyze your home. So you want to make sure that you um, act as if you are a guest in your own house. And you want to start off by standing out on like standing out on the sidewalk. If you're in an apartment building, stand out in the hallway and look at your front door or look at the front of your house and take and bring a piece of paper and a pen and write down how you're feeling about the outside of your house or things that may have to be worked on around the outside of your house and analyze the outside of your house and then walk in as you're still a guest in your own home and jot down this this picture here makes me feel depressed this picture here makes me feel good you know there's clutter over in that corner there's a leaky faucet in the kitchen write all this down and analyze everything of whatever you feel whatever you see all throughout your home this makes it so you have a picture of things that you may need to fix things that you may want to move get rid of um things that you may want to uh kind of clear out um especially in like the basement symbolizes your past so you have a lot of clutter in your basement you're holding on to too much of your past and you're being anchored and it's not allowing you to break through break free to your future um so analyzing is the first part after you analyze your home, you want to start cleaning and clearing out your home. So you want to go through all of everything. Um, you want to go through your closets, your drawers, your you know bathrooms, your cupboards, and clear out all things that you no longer need. Get a dumpster if you have to throw things out um, or get a box that just says trash. Put it all in there. Um, you want to get a box also that says like donation, um, keep, and all of that. So you can actually organize your organize it by different boxes that say what it is. So keep, organize, or keep, donate, trash, and just throw things in each box, whatever you don't want, um, or whatever you need to keep. And then, excuse me, after you clean out your home, um, you want to kind of go about in certain rooms and make sure that you're in power position in each and every single room. People uh, don't know this, but power position is a very powerful thing. Power position doesn't only um, help you with manifesting and subconsciously put you in power, but it also is actually based on quantum physics and it creates alpha brain waves. Um, through, I mean, obviously in your, in through your brain, alpha brain waves, which puts you in that power, um, power kind of mindset. And it also allows you to amplify your vibration, which we talked about in a previous video, mm -hmm. where when you amplify that vibration, you're bringing in more as you're manifesting because you're at a higher vibration. So power position is a very, um, uh, significant and uh, much needed for our lives. Now, power position is when you're sitting in a room and you can see the main door of whatever room that is um, by sitting in that area because your opportunities come through the door. They don't come through the window or the wall. They come through the door. Mm -hmm. And so you want to move your desk where you can see the door. You want to move your favorite chair in your living room where you're put against a wall on the back and you can see the main door. Um, and in your bedroom, you want to make sure when you sit up in your bed and you can look straight, you can see the door. This creates that power position and it creates those alpha brain waves that allow you to raise your vibration and amplify your manifesting. So I am in love with that, that there's a little bit of science behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, after you start putting yourself in power position, 
you want to activate your best directions. And when I, when I first um, started feng shui, I, well, I didn't even start it yet, I should say. Anna, my spirit guide, pushed me into it. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was the most ridiculous thing in the world. Like, mm -hmm. I was angry when she pushed me into it. And I said, I don't want to, I don't want to. Well, I started getting involved with it. My life started changing. And when I first did it, um, I learned about mirrors and how your mirror can't be directly across from your front door at the top of your stairs because your chi energy, the good energy starts at your front door and it comes in and it's reflected back out. Um, and when it's reflected back out, obviously you don't have that proper chi energy flowing through your home. Mm -hmm. And so I moved my mirror. I slept like a rock. I was out and I woke up, you know, obviously second guessing myself going, that's ridiculous. I know I moved that mirror, you know, yada, yada, yada. And um, I told my friend about it. And when I told my friend about it, uh, she said, yeah, have you ever heard of Marie Diamond? And I go, no, I haven't heard of Marie Diamond. So I look up Marie Diamond, who is my feng shui master now, by the way. And uh, she, when I, the first video I clicked on with her was talking about power position and how you should be in power position. So then I moved my desk in power position and I booked 12 people in five minutes right after. Wow. Yeah, right after moving my desk. So I still was second guessing. Of course, because I'm a skeptic medium, people laugh at that all the time. But if I don't see, hear, feel, or deal with it, I don't believe in it. I have to study into it or talk to my spirit guide about it. Mm -hmm. So I was second guessing still. So then I looked further into it. I said, if there, I'm going to do one more thing. And if I do this one more thing and it works, then I'm going to be hooked. So I found out that everyone has four best directions. And um, in these four best directions, uh, well, first, everyone has an energy number. I'm a number seven. So there's one through nine. I'm a seven, which is uh, known as the advisor. And um, when you look into that, then you have your four best directions. Your four best directions indicate where your success direction is, your wisdom direction is, your relationship direction is, and your health direction is. And I said, I'm going to activate my success direction. So when I activate my success direction... I was then offered six events in six big events in one month, which led to my first personal onstage live show at a beautiful old huge theater. Wow. And then, yeah. And then I wrote a book with Marie Diamond, which went number one bestseller in eight countries in literally one hour. Wow. Um, and I, I just, I fell in love with it. And um I continued to study with feng shui and it even brought me the opportunity to uh, go out to LA and have a beautiful weekend with Mar Murray Diamond and um, hang out with her and all of that. So I studied through her school, which was, um, which is why I'm a diamond feng shui consultant and with feng shui, uh, it just changed my life. So everyone has these best directions. So um, when you activate them, it will help with success uh, wisdom, relationship, and your health. And the three rooms that you want to really pay very close attention to mm -hmm. um, in your home for this, for, for your best directions is your bedroom. So when you activate your bedroom, you are activating it for your personal romantic relationship and also your personal health. So when you activate your four best directions in your bedroom, you are activating them for um, success in your relationship, good healthy relationship, good health, um, good relationship, and you're bringing in wisdom into the relationship. Um, and you and I were talking about this one day too, where I put a picture, my, my, my husband's a gamer, and I was getting upset because he was always walking past me, not paying attention to me. And he would go into his game room, he'd go up to use the bathroom, go back to his game room. So I hung a picture of him and I up in my relationship direction in my bedroom. And ever since then, now he knows why it's up there. I told him it was for feng shui. He didn't know like the reason exactly, but I said it was for feng shui. And um, ever since then, he stops, gives me a hug and kiss and goes back to the bed and then goes, he goes to the bathroom, goes back to his game room. So it works. <laughs> 
And then I started decorating my bedroom with our wedding stuff. And he was too much up my butt. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> there comes a time where you need your space, right? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so... Um, so I took everything of the wedding out of the bedroom and left that picture. That was, that was all I needed. That was all I needed. Um, so yeah, so your, your bedroom is your romance and your, um, and your, uh, personal health. Now, when you think about it too, if you have clutter around your bedroom, you're cluttering your relationship, you're cluttering your, um, you're cluttering your health. And uh, what I find very interesting is when people that are single and they talk about it all the time, well, Chris, I don't, I, I can't seem to find someone, you know, it's not the universe won't give me anyone. And I say, well, what does your bedroom look like? And they go, well, I have a bed that's pushed against the wall. Well, that's your problem because there's only space for one person to get in. The right. universe says, fine, be single. Yeah. That's what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. Um so pay very close attention to that. And um, your the, the second room that you want to pay very close attention to is your uh, living room. Your living room indicates your uh, family and your friendships. So when you activate your directions in your living room, you're creating a successful family. You're creating a good relationship with your family. You're creating a good, healthy family and good healthy friendships and success in your friendships, bringing the right people around you. Um, and then uh, with your, with the third room is your office space. So you wanna activate your office space. You wanna make sure that in your success direction, you're activating it to bring success into your career mm -hmm. and your business and your work. You wanna you know, activate your relationships in your, in your um office space because this will help indicate or amplify a good relationship with your coworkers or um, your clients and things like that. And then of course, if you activate your health, your health relate or your health direction, it activates a good healthy career, a good healthy business um, and things like that. Now, people all the time go, well, what do I put in that direction to activate those directions? Mm -hmm. it, uh, it also depends on the direction, obviously. Right. So for example, um, with Northwest, Northwest indicates what we call heaven's gates in feng shui, which I find very interesting as a psychic medium, having heaven's gates as my success direction. Mm -hmm. I always laugh about that. Um, but uh, I'm allowed to put in that direction um angels or fairies i can put um silver colors round things mirrors and uh, not mirrors um uh moons and stars can go in that direction um and that activates that direction obviously what i just said is a list of things you don't want to put the whole list of things in there because you don't want to clutter your success direction with things that activate it you know yes. if you only if you only have the space for one or two things that's fine it activates it but you don't want to clutter the whole space with um with it uh yes. and i can also put diamonds in that direction too which i love it's it, it's amazing um but i can put diamonds in that area now um if you have like the north as your success direction north is a water direction so you can put like a fountain in that direction um you can put a mirror you can put aqua blue or uh royal blue so you can put that to activate that direction now um south is fire so fire colors things like that so it depends on the direction that you put what you're what you have to put things in and what happens with this too is that you can also create your own things to place in that direction so your vision boards can go in those directions because obviously your vision board amplifies your success yeah. um you can put things that you want to um you want to do in the future for yourself um for example, uh, I got the idea from Marie Diamond, but I put um, three fake Oscars in my success direction because I would love to work with and connecting with teaching people with movies and videos on real spirituality and the truth behind it all and yeah. all of that stuff. Um, so connecting with people with Oscars and things like that. Um, so you can do that. And uh, so it doesn't have to be just the things in your direction. You have to think about, well, what do I want to bring in my success or your health direction as well there may be things that you want to put in the health direction 
but um, you can put like even a list of your vitamins or supplements, or you can put your vitamins and supplements in that direction. Um, the name of your doctor um, and things like that in your relationship direction. For my relationship direction, I can activate that with two amethyst uh, course, uh, two amethyst crystals, um, and the list goes on. We can also put people's pictures in there that we'd like to have a good bond with. Um, so, for example, with your with your family in your living room, you can put a family portrait in your relationship direction. Um, it, it, for example, in my bedroom. I put that picture of my husband and I in, in, in that direction. Right. Um, in your office space, you can put like a picture of you and your employees or you and your clients, like you have a few clients that you connect with um, or people that have brought more success into your, yeah. um, into your business that you want more relationship with you can put in that area. So you want to make sure you're activating these directions and connecting with those directions. Um, what's also really well too, is making sure you're facing the directions as well. So it won't be always 100% to do this. Now, feng shui isn't a, nothing's going to be 100%, you know, Yes, this is 100% feng shui, you know, right. it's not going to be 100% mm -hmm. because there's certain things in your house that don't make sense to feng shui. Yeah. For example, my kitchen's in the north of my home when it should be in the south of my home, right. you know, so nothing's going to be perfect. But um, what you need to do is number one, the rule is always be in power position. But if you can be in power position and face one of your best directions, that is like the ultimate like icing on the cake. Yes. And with me right now, while I'm talking to you on, on, um, you know, on my computer, I'm actually facing my success direction as I'm talking to you. So I'm in power position and I'm facing my success direction. And this amplifies that success. It amplifies what I'm doing and connects with what I'm doing. And throughout the other videos as well, because I used to have um, a different room as my office. But um, I was still facing my success directions in those other rooms. Right. Um, and it helps with that, too. What I love the most and I found very interesting is each direction has um, colors that connect with those areas. And if you look up what your success direction is, and you guys can look this up through Marie Diamond's book, um, the energy number book, you can get on Amazon or you can look it up on her app, the Marie Diamond app. Mm -hmm. um, but you can find your direction and whatever your direction is, for your success, it has three colors. So my success direction connects with silver, opal, and diamond. So you can actually wear those colors. So anything that has silver, opal, and diamond, once I wear those, it shows and connects with success for me and brings in more of that success for me. Um, and uh, you can also, everyone can wear royal blue for success as well. Royal blue is a success color for everybody. So you can definitely just wear that. Um, you can also put these colors in your uh, your logos. So if you have a logo, you can put those colors in your logo because it amplifies your success as well. So using those colors, uh, if you see cer certain logos of mine, that, like the Christopher Stilson logo, it has the silver or the diamonds in it. Um, I put a golden diamond in it, but colors symbolize certain things and uh, meaning. So the reason why royal blue is a successful color for everyone because royal blue symbols power and connects with power. Um, and then uh, opal represents the um, transformation and uh, diamonds actually represent faith. So I love that, I mean, obviously with what I do, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. Um, so yeah, so you can actually wear those colors. You can put them in your, um, you can put them in your logo. You can put them around you as well. So like when you do your um, per, your uh, professional photos, headshots and things like that, wear it or have it as a background. I'm actually wearing white today, which is um, okay for me because uh, in the Chinese Zodiac, I'm a metal rooster and white and, um, white and silver um, represent metal as well. So with white, I can wear that as well because I'm a metal rooster, um, which I find funny. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can also wear those colors as well too. And if you have like, um, 
a purse or a car, you know, things like that, you can find those in your success colors as well and carry them around with you. And it helps amplify as well. So there's numerous things you can do um, to create that success and um, whatnot. Now, the wisdom direction, because people ask about this a lot, because obviously, you know what success is, you know what your relation, the relationship is, you know what health is, people go, why is there a wisdom direction? And the wisdom direction actually helps you connect with um, the higher power or your heaven luck in a way, um, because it helps you amplify with um, that knowing and that connection with your intuition. So with, with that, you can put like um, your favorite quotes in your wisdom direction. You can put, uh, I can put a Bible in mine. Um, you can put pictures of people that uh, give you inspiration and um, whatnot. I have a picture of Sylvia Brown in my wisdom direction. I mm-hmm. absolutely love her. I've studied a lot of her stuff. Um, I have second guessed a lot of her stuff and Anna has put in words to accuracy for her. Um, I also have a picture of uh, my friend Tara, who is a very big inspiration to me. So she's in my wisdom direction. And you can also put books um, that you want to know more about um, with wisdom and things like that. Like I keep my feng shui books in my wisdom direction and uh, books on God and uh, spirit and things like that. Um, in my wisdom direction as well. But um, it also depends on where your wisdom direction is too, where you can put the um, inspirational quotes and like things like that, but you might want to like see like if your wisdom direction is a South area, there's fire obviously. So put a little bit of fire element in that area um, and things like that too. Now with feng shui, when I was studying feng shui, there's, I can do feng shui for your home, for your life. I can do feng shui for your business. Um, I can also do feng shui for real estate, which I find interesting. So I can actually help you find a really good home for yourself that will bring you in better chi and better energy. Um, I can also find, I can also help you sell a house quicker by bringing in better chi and better energy where people walk in going, I feel amazing in this house Mm -hmm. and they just automatically want to buy it. Um, So I can help with that too. Uh, now one thing I do want to bring up as well is with directions the reason why we put the directions in the rooms and stuff is because the chi energy starts at the door and the chi energy doesn't know where the hell to go you know it's 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 you know it's just flowing in yeah and I always tell people that these directions and what you put in these directions what it does is it brings the chi energy in and it's like an acupuncture So it's like when you activate certain directions in your home, it puts a needle in and it allows that energy to flow to the needle, flow to the needle, flow to the needle, and then out your back door. So it's flowing through correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't really have to pay too much attention to your bathrooms. The main thing with your bathroom you want to do is keep it clean and you want to make sure the toilet lid is shut and your bathroom door is shut. If you cannot shut the bathroom door, at least make sure the toilet lid is shut. But bathrooms are bad feng shui. Um, they have obviously drains in them, which drains the chi energy. And it also is where, you know, yeah. And it's also where you, um, you know, you go to the bathroom and all of that stuff in and you wash the dirt off of you. So they're just really honestly a bad feng shui. Now bath or, or kitchens too. Kitchens are a back and forth area where, Obviously, because there's a drain in the bath, in the, in the, in the kitchen, Mm -hmm. that is the bad feng shui, but your kitchen is always your heart of your home. It's where you bring in memories and things like that too. So you can activate your kitchen by putting fire colors in there. Kitchens are always fire. So you can put your fire colors in there or things that represent the fire and things like that. But you want to make sure, you know, um, that it's nice and clean all the time or your cupboards are cleaned out and organized um and things like that because it's it's the heart of your home you know you 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 have to think that your home is like a body and you know the two corners in the front of your house are your your hands and then you have your head and then you have the the body part and then you have the the feet and stuff usually when you have certain things that are off in those certain areas you may see um issues with your physical body 
So, you know, if you, if your kitchen's your heart of your home and it's not cleaned out properly, you may have heart issues, you know, um, and you have to think about it that way too, because you're connected with your home, right? you know, and uh, so keep the inside, like I said, clean, organize, activate your directions, be in power position. Um, it makes you analyze it all too. And the outside of your home as well has an aura. Everything has an aura. And with the home itself, with that aura, whatever you have in that, in your outside of your home, it also comes into your and into the energy field yeah. and affects your life. So my mother, when I, when we started doing this feng shui and stuff, um, I was doing feng shui in my mom's house because she's spoiled. I just do everything for her anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I was doing feng shui and she just says, Chris, I don't know why, but this whole entire month or so, I've been feeling so attacked. I just feel like I'm being attacked. And I kept looking around the house going, I don't know what to be attacking her. And I bought her this little wooden fountain, not fountain, um, a little wooden um, wa uh, wishing well um, for the outside of her home. And I took it out of the car and I put it in the front yard for a second so I can look around and see where I wanted to put it. Yeah. And I looked at her front door and I go, that is why she's being attacked. She had a sign, a welcome sign. You know, those very, they're like uh, country styled, but they go all the way up and it says welcome going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she had one on the right. So if I, if I was looking towards the street, it was on the right side of the door and it was tall. It was taller than I was. And it said, mm -hmm. welcome. And I go, that's why you're being attacked. People don't know this. There's different parts of your of your house there's four different parts of your outside of your home that are very important and the when you stand at your front door looking at the street the right side is your tiger side the left side is your dragon side so when you have something taller than you at your tiger side the tiger's attacking you it's jumping up and it's attacking you so whatever you have there is sending that message out to the universe going attack attack i'm feeling attacked and so i moved that sign and instantly you just feel a like a relief type situation yeah a relief you just felt so good with it and it allowed my mom to stop feeling so attacked because like i said it was taller than she was it was taller than i was you know right. and i'm five nine and a quarter for crying out loud <laughs> um but uh so i moved it and she felt a lot better and that was why she felt attacked. So this does this stuff does have a lot of meaning and a lot of connection. And you just have to be aware of what you have around you and what yeah. you want to be around you. If you want more abundance, bring some more gold in, you know, things like that. Um, and there's so much more that goes into it. It's not just the topics that I just talked about today. It is mm -hmm. a lot more detail that goes into it, but it changed my whole entire life. And I would not at all you know, second guess it anymore. When, once I, that third thing happened, when I connected with um, my success direction and all those six events just contacted me mm -hmm. and I was just floored, I was hooked and it completely changed my life. And there's so much more that, like I said, it's so, there's so much more that comes into it. Um, just kind of being aware of what's around you is very important. It mm -hmm. is very important. And allowing yourself to um let go of things is very important as well because a lot of people have a lot of clutter because it was this person's or that person's or has meaning but sometimes you think about you know do you really need that right now mm -hmm. or you know do you have the memory and just kind of wanting to release it um because the memory obviously is more important too i do also like to make sure people know that when you start doing feng shui um usually people a lot of people do like to do it just because but usually it's because people feel like their life is falling out of place like it's it's spiraling out of control yeah when you start doing feng shui you'll start to feel as if it's still spiraling and the reason for that is because the universe is clearing all the crap out so mm -hmm. it's going to feel like it's still spiraling because right. the universe is like okay let's clear it out let's clear it out but once it's all cleared out it just starts picking back up and just taking off. It just starts going up, 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 up. And there's no looking back to that. Yeah. Um, another little thing that I like people to know too, is that 
for me, when I started doing feng shui, and I don't know if it's because I work for spirit and God, and I just go, you know, I'm working for you guys. You better help me out a little more. Right. Um, <laughs> but um, I think it's just like, it happened instantly as I was instantly. Yeah. But people look for that. People want it to happen instantly. In in reality, when you do feng shui, it can happen. It can happen up to nine days, nine months, or nine days, nine weeks, or nine months. So sometimes it won't happen instantly, but you will eventually see it. Yeah. Um, because it has it has to just be amplified. But it also depends on what energy you put into it, how you put that energy into it, and things like that too. So that's a little bit about the beginnings of feng shui, you guys, and the whole change on it all and changing your life. And before before we go on, um, feng shui is actually earth luck is actually the first luck you should start with, mm. um, because what it does is it ripples into your human luck and then it ripples into your heaven luck. So once you change the environment, the rest of it kind of just falls into place. So think about that too when you guys want to start doing this. And I remember when we were talking in a previous conversation, you had mentioned, because we were talking about prosperity and success. And one of the things you had told me is clear your shoes from your doorway. And as soon as you told me that, I was like, because a lot of times people will come home and they would kick their shoes off and they would leave it by the door. And so, and I knew for some reason that I never liked that. Like it would bother me for some reason. And so I would always grab people's shoes. But ever since you told me that if you clear that area, when you're first walking in, you will have more prosperity and more prosperity mm -hmm. will come your way. And so I was like, all right, everybody's shoes goes all, all the way over here. You know, I was like, <laughs> you want yes. it in a basket over there, you know? And, yeah. but I noticed the change. I noticed, yeah. you know, opportunities starting to come my way and I noticed start, you know, things change. And even like you mentioned, like, you know, when I started making changes in my life, it didn't happen right away. It was like, mm -hmm. it took time, you know, spiritually when I started to make changes and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, it was like one day things were going this way. And then the other day, you know, you know, after a while, I just woke up one morning and my life was completely changed. You know, it was like, yeah. and it was just, you know, you went from A to Z and I don't know how I got there, but I was fine with it because I was in a much better place, you know? So yeah. it's pretty crazy. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing that was too, is when, first of all, with you knowing you don't like that, like when you see the shoes and you're just like, I just, I, it irritates me, you know, it irks my nerves. Yeah. It's because spiritually we know. Now, Anna has told me, because I, when I was studying feng shui, it kind of just naturally came to me more and more. And I said, Anna, why is this so easy for me to understand? Yeah. And she said, well, because in a past life you did feng shui and you spiritually already know. But when you, when, in, when you said that about your front door and you're like, I always didn't like, I knew that, you know, I just felt they were something. I was the same way. My husband would come home and the living room would look different every month <laughs> or the bedroom would look different every month. And he's like, can you stop moving it? And I'm just like, <laughs> I can't, there's something wrong with it. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. And when I started doing feng shui, I haven't moved things the mm -hmm. way I used to. Because when you have certain things in a proper spot, spiritually you go, Oh, that's why I felt like that. That makes sense. Yeah. And with your foyer, because that's what we, that's what you call the area when you first walk in your home. Like people say, well, it's, it's my living room. That's still that little area you walk into your foyer. That's where you walk in. You can walk into your living room. Yes. But that little area. Yeah. Your foyer is where your money comes in. That's mm -hmm. the first part where your money comes in. And when you have shoes sitting there, clothes sitting there, jackets sitting there, you're cluttering your money. So you're, you're pretty much saying to the universe, I don't want any more money. There's too much clutter here and I don't want to take care of it. So I'm just going to say that I don't want any more money. We're fine with that. Right. But once you organize it and clear it out, that amplifies that, wow, there's space here. Yeah. Now there's more opportunities for money to flow in. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can also put a little bit of gold there. If you put some gold um, um, decorations, um, a gold symbolizes abundance. So you're, okay. uh, you're making more abundance with your income because it's coming right in. I like that. I like that. I think before, after I talk to you, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to find something gold and hang it on the doorknob. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. Yes. And it was yeah. funny because even with the shoes, like I actually found a mat and it says, put your shoes away. And I put it like right in front of the door. So like when the everyone opens the door, the first thing they see is it's an empty, clear door doorway now. And the first thing you see on the ground, it says, put your shoes away. And so <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. Oh, I love that. I need to get one of those. <laughs> My kids are really good with it, though. My kids will put my kids will put their shoes away because I'm right on top of them. Right. Well, they know. They know. They know. Yeah. Daddy wants it done a certain way. They're going to do it the way Daddy wants it. You know. Yeah. And and it's just you know it's it's this has been going on for years. Like even with, with with the Asian culture, they have a lot of ways of doing things and certain colors I'm focusing. Now, when you talked yeah. about your your number, you knew your number was seven. How did you come to that? Like, how did you learn what your, your number was? Can you go into detail about that? So to find your number, um, like I said, you can get the energy number book by Marie Diamond. Um, you can also you get her, her app, Marie Diamond, the Marie Diamond app. Okay. Um, and what you need to do with that is you need your birthday, day, month, and year. Mm -hmm. And you need to put in the sex you were born as. Um, because the you were, you know, in, in, I always because nowadays you know people do get somewhat offended by that and it's nothing to be offended by with that situation I always like to mention that because I love everyone and things like that but you were born with a certain type of energy you know and when it comes down to that you need the sex you were born with to connect with that number yes um and uh, so, you know, it's just, that's just how it works. And then once you get the number, you don't have to think about it again. You're just that number, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so your birthday and the sex you were born um, as. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. when you know the number you're born as, then like, what does it tell you about yourself? Like, what is some, you, you mentioned it briefly, but can you go a little deeper? So with me being number seven, it explained what, because I'm known as the advisor. Mm -hmm. There's, there's the teacher, the healer, um, the creator. So there's numerous different things. And it goes into detail what like the advisor would represent or mean. Gotcha. So I'm a, it means like I'm a natural born leader and um, I'm here to help a lot of other people. But um, it also indicates like with your directions, it tells you in Marie Diamond's book, the the um, the energy number book. It tells me like how I can improve my health as that number. So okay. it, it says I can eat like more potatoes or um, help my inner child, things like that. Um, and then um, it tells you like what you can do for your relationships and you know your success. It also tells you your professional choices. So there's actually professional choices that connect with that number that that number's really naturally good at. Mm -hmm. So with me, it's um, giving advice, obviously, or being the advisor. Um, it's, uh, I can't remember the whole list, but I can, I can work with, um, work with like a, um, a father figure, things like that. But uh, it, it, oh, I can, I can also um, invest in gold and silver. Um, so it just tells you some professional choices. So it just gives you a lot of detail. The, the app itself is a beautiful app to use because it comes with a compass that, mm -hmm. um, isn't like a normal compass. It shows you your directions. So right. you can just stand in the middle of the room. It points the directions of the four directions. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, with the book, the book gives you more detail in it obviously. Okay. So, um, I, I always advise people just to get both anyways. It's a free app, you know, so you might as well, and then just get the book, you know, it just gives you more detail. Now tell me about the books that you were in. So how many books have you, have you written one or two? I keep forgetting. I have written two so far. So, um, I'm going to be working, I'm working on a third, but the first book was with Marie Diamond mm -hmm. and that was, that was called the global conscious entrepreneurs. She has, I think three of these books out. I was in the first original one. And what this book was, was it was a book filled with, um, 49 different entrepreneurs and each of us got a chapter and it pretty much just told everybody our life stories and how we became who we are and what we are. Yeah. Um, it's like, uh, it helps people to become more aware of success and how we, they can personally get there. So it's an inspirational book. Yes. Um, and it's a beautiful book. And then, um, the book 
called uh, Taking It Back, A Simple Guide to Start Transforming Your Life, which is actually a workbook. And in this workbook, it gives you a little bit about each of the lucks, heaven luck, human luck, and earth luck, Mm -hmm. and a little bit of my story on each of those. And then it gives you three different, in each, three different um, things that you can start doing to tap into those lux. Okay. And then it just amplifies from there. Oh, I love it. I love it. Cause I think people don't realize, but you know, the way we set our life up on earth, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and how it manifests is so powerful. People don't realize, you know, with, you know, how every, how everything we do, how we set things up, you know, the way we set things up, you know, and even, you know, even some of this is backed by science too, because they say when someone is cluttered, their mind is everywhere. They can't yep. focus, you know, they're, exactly. they're just like, you know, they, they're the way a person's house is represents what's going on in their mind, you know, and exactly. that's been proven by a science, you know, and it's, yeah. Yeah. You know, and people talk about too, with um, how they wake up with anxiety all the time. Yeah. And um, when people wake up with anxiety, you need to look at your nightstand or what's around you while you sleep. Because while you sleep, your your aura, your spiritual, your aura around you, it expands. So whatever you're putting inside your aura as you're sleeping, it's coming into your life. So if you have a cluttered nightstand, you're bringing that clutter into your aura, which is then causing anxiety when you wake up. So you should have a really a clear, clear, uh, clear stand and really a, a, is a clear s- surrounding if you can, because then it won't yeah. affect your aura, it seems like. You- Exactly, exactly. And it also depends on the colors. So for example, they say um, what uh, Marie Diamond teaches is um, you shouldn't have any water in your bedroom or water colors. So uh, you can put like a glass of water in your nightstand. That's not a big deal. Um, But if you have a picture of an ocean above your headboard, then... um, it actually is causing you to feel like you're drowning as you're sleeping or, you know, because it's subconsciously thinking I'm in water, I'm in water. Um, You also, um, you don't want any like colors of uh, the woods around you or pictures of the woods, because when you do that, you feel like you're on edge all the time because you feel like you're in the middle of the woods sleeping and you have to protect yourself. Yeah. So they say the bedroom should always be white, off white, um, beige, silver, gray. And then when you activate your directions, that's what brings in the other colors. Okay. You know, that like the, the little bit of things that you need, yeah. but you don't want a tremendous amount of like reds where you feel like you're on fire all the time. Right. Right. Um, and then, uh, um, I'm trying to think of what else I was going to say about the bedroom because it's a very, it's a very, it's a very interesting area with the bedrooms too, because you just, everything's a part of that subconscious me- messages. So what you're yeah. seeing before you fall asleep, you're bringing into your mind anyways. Right. Um, oh, mirrors. So with mirrors in your bedroom, it should never face your bed. Mm-hmm. And the reason for this is because if you're sick and you're laying in bed, you're actually reflecting the sick energy back to you. So you may not heal fast enough. Right. Or if you're sleep, when you're sleeping, you wake up feeling more tired because you're just reflecting that tired energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, uh, if you're laying there with your partner, you're doubling the amount of people, which can actually create affairs and cheating. Wow. Yeah. And that's why you should never have it facing your bed. Um, and then uh, I laughed so hard when, when Marie said this one day, I love angels. I'm absolutely, I, I love working with angels and I love angel statues and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I had, an, I had, um, I had an angel in my bedroom, an angel statue in my bedroom. And I was listening to a thing with uh, Marie. It was one of her little videos that she was making and she was talking about the bedroom and she goes, um, never put an angel in your bedroom. Really? Be- yeah. Because angels are good at, um, angels are good at bringing love, but they're not there to make love. So you'll have like a sexless, sexless 
life if you have angels around you in your bedroom. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I better start moving those angels out of my bedroom then. <laughs> Every year well, my mother off. buys me as a present. She buys me an angel and I put it in my bedroom. I have like about 20 of them in my bedroom. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you, and, and another thing with bedrooms real quick too, is that you should never have other pictures of um, people in your bedroom. It should only be you and in, in your significant other, because if you have other pictures that also brings more people into your relationship, interfering with your relationship and things right. like that. Or if you ever see like your kids won't leave your bedroom, like they keep coming in, it's because you have a picture of them in your bedroom. Right. So they're going to keep coming in. I laugh one day too, because um, Marie said that, you know, children are supposed to grow up and get out. They're supposed to, you know, do what they need to do. But sometimes there's people that, there's people that have children that still at home living in their basement, you know, at the yeah. age of 30. And she goes, when you do, when you, when you, when you have this happening, look at your living room and see if you have any pictures of your children as babies, mm -hmm. because that is sending a message to the universe saying, I don't want them to ever grow up. I don't want right. them to ever leave. Yeah. So if you remove those pictures of babies as babies, it will create that energy to help them with the success and moving out. Right. And, you know, all of that. So I update my children every year with their new school picture. <laughs> <laughs> I love my kids. I love my kids. But I want them to be very successful. And I would be damned if they're going to live with me for the rest of their life. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree on that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, if you yeah. had to take everything we talked about today and you had to emphasize on a, a couple of important factors, what are some things you really like to emphasize today about earth luck? Your surroundings are the most impactful thing of your life. Um, to be in power position at all times, that way you create those alpha brain waves and you're allowing yourself to create more of that power and manifesting energy. And um, clean and clear, because it's very important to allow new opportunities into your life and allow yourself to have um, a more open space to breathe and yeah. uh, create. I agree. And where can people find your books if they want to get your books? So they're on Amazon. So all you have to do is look up Global Conscious Entrepreneurs on Amazon by Marie Diamond, or you can look up Taking It Back by Christopher Stilson. And where can people find, can you tell people all the services you provide again and where they can find them? So I do, I do a lot. Um, so I do with the Heaven Luck. I help people with connect with their Heaven Luck by doing a lot of psychic readings. That's the number one thing people come to see me for um, is my psychic readings um, and guidance. I can also do like psychic parties and groups. And then with your Human Luck, I help you with as a transformational coach, a transformational leader. Um, I help you kind of, transform your life with your own mindset and being human. Um, and then I also do energy therapy as a Reiki, um, a Reiki practitioner and an I in certified in IET, which is integrated energy therapy. And then of course I do the feng shui, which taps you into your earth luck. So I help you tap into all three of your lux and help you change every single aspect that you can of your life to amplify and create. Um, and then you can find me at ChristopherStilson.com. A lot of things are on there. You can also find me on Facebook at Psychic Christopher Stilson or Facebook.com slash The Stilsons. Um, you can also find me on Instagram as Christopher Stilson Official. And um, I think a lot of the other ones are already on my website or other pages. Oh, wow. This has been an amazing show. I love, I love how you tap into earth luck and heaven luck and, and how you are able to like, you know, show people that there's more, you know, to life than what we see on this planet. You know, we really have to get our self out of the gray box and really tap into our energies because the world is made of energy. And anytime a skeptic comes and, and talks to me and like is skeptical, I say, well, you know, if everything is energy. And if we didn't have energy, we wouldn't have 
you know, our planet, you know, the planet wouldn't exist. And, mm -hmm. you know, everything it, it evolves around energy. So, you know, the blockage and how we set things up and how we think and how we live our lives and the way our mindset is, you know, it all affects our energy. And, you know, and before we go, if you had to say anything to people who are skeptical and, you know, they're interested, but they're skeptical, what would you like to tell them maybe to, so they can really open their minds and maybe step a little bit out of that gray box that they're in? So first of all, I love skeptics um, because I am a skeptic. And, you know, that's the thing is you have to, you don't have to have an open mind for feng shui. I love it because you can literally, people that are skeptical can just move something in their house. They can become power position in their office space and they'll just start seeing things happen, which is out of the blue and they can't put two and two together. So if you are skeptical about the feng shui, like I was in the beginning, put yourself in power position, clean the shoes out of your foyer, you know, and you will start to see a change in your life, whether it is within that nine days, nine weeks or nine months. Right. I love it. I love it. Well, Christopher, this has been amazing as always. I can't wait to have you back on the show. Christopher is part of our community and he's always around and he's here. If you need questions to answer, go to his website, go to any of his, his social media. And he was always willing to talk to people and he has, you can book appointments with him and he's always there for you. So Christopher, thank you so much for coming on the show and teaching us about earth love today. I am so glad you came. As you can see, I, when we, I always have a smile on my, my face when I speak to you because you have such po strong, positive energy and you always leave me in, in such a good mood after we have spoken. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. All right. You have a great day. Me too.